Hey, what's up you guys? Installing a trailer hitch on your BMW X3 can take you to some really cool places like camping, biking, or even towing a U-Haul trailer just about anywhere in North America. Let's go ahead and break down this install. You'll need the tool seen here to complete this installation. So this install can be a little bit more difficult. We need to remove our entire bumper fascia to be able to bring our hitch into place. Now there's a couple screws that are located underneath our tail lights. So we're gonna need to take off our tail lights to get to there so we can remove our bumper. So we're gonna start by removing this push pin using a trim panel tool. Now we're just gonna pull off this cover right here. And that exposes two 10 millimeter nuts that we'll remove with the 10 millimeter socket. Now there's one more nut holding our tail light into place, but it's inside our paneling right here. We're just gonna remove this cover just by pulling out and then up. And this exposes it, you can see it right here in this opening. So that opening is pretty small where our bolt is located, so it can be very difficult to pull it out. So we're gonna use a magnet so we don't accidentally drop it behind our paneling. Now with those attachments removed, we can just take off our tail light. It's super easy to do. And we're going to disconnect our harness by pushing on the tab and pulling it out. Now with our tail light removed, we can remove this bolt right here that's holding our bumper in. We'll need to use an eight millimeter socket to remove it. And now we're gonna repeat that entire same process on the passenger side. Now we're going to remove 10 screws on the bottom of our bumper fascia. We have three right here on the side. We have three on the other side and four here in the middle. We'll remove those using an eight millimeter socket. Next, we're gonna to go to our driver's side wheel well. We're gonna remove one screw right here using an eight millimeter socket. Next, we're gonna remove these three plastic rivets on the inside of our wheel well trim. Now to remove this, we're gonna take a screwdriver and we're gonna hammer out the center pin. And once that's popped out, we're going to use a trim panel tool to pry it out. Now with those pins removed, we're gonna pull back on our wheel weld trim right here. We're just gonna pull out and then pull all the way up to about here. Now this exposes two screws that we're going to remove using an eight millimeter socket. And then we'll repeat that whole process on the passenger side. Now we're going to remove this reflector on the driver's side. We're just gonna take a trim panel tool and we're gonna insert it right here on the inside. And we're gonna slide it in behind there and just pop it out towards the outside of the vehicle. And then we'll slide it inward. And those are the tabs that hold it in. Now this exposes a screw that we're going to remove using an eight millimeter socket. And we'll repeat on the other side. Now we're ready to remove our bumper fascia. We're gonna start by undoing both of our sides and then we'll finish in the middle when we completely pull it off.
Now the tabs underneath the taillights can be pretty tight, so to help undo them, you can use a trim panel tool, go underneath and push down on the black tab as you pull up, which helps you release the bumper fascia. So as we remove the center of our bumper fascia, we have a wiring harness right here on the passenger side. We're just gonna push down on this tab and release it, and we'll set our bumper aside. Now underneath our bumper beam, we're going to remove this panel right here. It's held in by 10 screws that we'll remove using an eight millimeter socket. So now we need to disconnect our exhaust from our bumper beam. Now our exhaust brackets are held on by a bolt and nut that we'll remove using a 13 millimeter socket. And we'll repeat on the other side. Now we need to remove the bracket for our exhaust hanger on the passenger side as we will not be using it anymore. It will just attach to our hitch. So we're gonna use exhaust removal pliers to remove it. Now we're going to remove our bumper beam. We are going to remove the four nuts that are holding it into place. There's two on this side, two on the other side, and we're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket to remove those. So now we're gonna remove this panel on our bumper beam so we can get all of these sensor wires out of the way. Now we're going to remove these push pins. There's six of them. And we're gonna use a trim panel tool to take those out. And then we're gonna remove this clip right here with our trim tool. Now we're gonna take this panel and we're just gonna flip it up into our trunk and then we'll go ahead and remove our bumper beam. Now on the driver's side of our bumper beam, we're gonna remove the stud that was holding our exhaust hanger. Now to remove this, we found that it was really difficult since it seems like it's welded on. So we found it was easiest to cut it off with a die grinder and then drill out the hole. Now we're gonna take our hitch and we're gonna line it up with the four studs for our bumper beam. And now we're gonna take our bumper beam and hitch and line it up with our four studs on our vehicle. Now with this all lined up, we're gonna take our existing nuts that were on there previously and we're going to tighten it up using an 18 millimeter socket. And now we're gonna to torque all of our nuts to the manufacturer specification using an 18 millimeter socket and a five inch extension. Now we're gonna reinstall this plate that had all of our sensors on it. Now on the passenger side exhaust, we're going to reinstall our rubber grommet onto our new post that's on our hitch. Now it's easier if you take the whole grommet off and spray everything with some soapy water. Now on the driver's side, we're gonna take our new bolt, put it through that hole that we removed the stud from then we're gonna bring our exhaust hanger through there. And then using our existing nut, we're going to secure it into place. So 
So we're gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench to hold the top of our bolt and 13 millimeter socket to tighten it up from below. And then we'll torque it to manufacturer specification. So following our instructions, we marked out our underbody panel that went right where our hitch is because we need to cut out a hole for it to sit into. So we taped it off following our instructions and we're gonna cut it out using some tin snips. Now we're just gonna double check and make sure it fits. And we're gonna just put a couple in to hold it into place. And then we'll reinstall the rest. Now that we have our hitch installed and everything back into place, we're ready to reinstall our bumper. Just make sure that you plug in your sensor when you put it back on. So our kit comes with new plastic rivets to reinstall in our wheel well. Now you'll need a plastic rivet gun to install it. So then we'll take our plastic rivet and we'll insert the skinnier rod into the rivet gun. Then we'll place it into the hole and then we'll give it a couple cranks. And then it breaks off and it's sealed. And we'll repeat with all of the other plastic rivets on both sides. Now we're all done in our cargo area, so we'll go ahead and put everything back together. With your hitch installed, we pulled our vehicle down onto level ground to show you some important measurements for your hitch accessories. This is a two inch receiver. From the pinhole to the edge of the bumper is three and a half inches. And from the ground to the top of the inside of the receiver is 13 and a half inches. This will help you determine the length, rise, and drop for your hitch accessories, such as a bike rack, and cargo carrier. So that wraps up our install and our video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about this product or if you'd like to schedule an installation with a U-Haul Hitch professional, you can visit your closest U-Haul Hitch Center or you can visit us online at uhaulhitches.com. Thank you.